السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم وائد السلام Hello everyone Welcome back to my channel شمسة عراولة I hope you guys are doing amazing And today I am here to stir some shit up Okay Because I'm a little bit in my feelings I'm joking I'm kidding No I'm not um, I know Somali men are going to hate this Because it's another divorce story But you know i got two to tell so uh one was an invalid marriage so technically speaking this is my first divorce story technically speaking uh anyway um i don't even know where the hell to begin with this mm. well i got married in 2013 as you know my mom died in 2012 and that speaks volumes so I kind of rushed into a marriage right after getting um, my divorce from one. So it wasn't great, but I just really needed a place to fit in. I needed a place to feel loved and wanted and I didn't want to cause ebb to my family. So I thought like I needed to get married. Like I had to, otherwise what the fuck am I going to do? Um, and i think i got kicked out as well no that was afterwards was that afterwards bitch i was desperate okay desperation anyway um married him in a very small ceremony where my in-law actually accused my cousins of stealing um, I fell down the stairs. Um, um, what else happened? She... <laughs> Yo, when I tell you my in-law was just causing all types of drama. Um, but I just chose to ignore it every time. Okay, uh, I fell down the stairs. I think that was enough bad luck uh, on my wedding day. What else can I say? I paid for the hotel. Um, and when I, we got married I stayed there for a little bit went back to the UK I was working and then I got kicked out of the house that I lived with uh, my sister and my dad long story so I moved to Holland so, within our marriage in the, from the beginning his family especially the females like his mom and his auntie dislike me and let me let you in on a little secret his auntie is the one i don't know if you would remember uh when i told you a woman in the hospital uh, when i was at the hospital with my mom told me that i was the cause of my mom's condition and this happened uh, whilst i was at the hospital that's his auntie okay so they don't like me they were like to him you know you could find better she ain't shit um you know you just generally do better but could he though i doubt it um so our marriage in the beginning was very rocky um a few fucked up shit happened within uh our marriage one of them being the mistake of living with my in-law is his mum although she's a lot nicer now um she was she just did not like me she didn't like anything about me and every single chance she got she used to tell me you're you're the one you're assy you know you're you were bad to your mom you're a bad breed you're the cause of your mom's death don't cause me the same headache that you caused your mom you put me your mom six feet under she used to sing that like it was a fucking tune okay and she used to say shit like oh i can make my son divorce you i'll be like okay go ahead please like what the fuck am i supposed to be scared like if your son dropped me as his wife yeah that is his loss not mine overall we were married for three years um within a few months i got pregnant and i remember even the way that i found out how i was pregnant we me and her got into the uh, the argument where she told me my son can divorce you i was like you know what i need a fucking break i went to my cousin's house stayed there for two weeks came back 
she stood at the door chatting 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 and then i felt a bit sick right i went to the toilet threw up i'm like i don't throw up so i went and got a pregnancy test came back she's still at the door talking 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 and then i look at the test and it said i'm pregnant and then i looked at her and then i looked and i started shaking and she's like what's wrong and i said i'm pregnant first thing that came out of her mouth was, oh my god my son is pregnant my son is gonna have a baby no i am having the baby not your son me but it was my son even me breathing bothered her like i could sit there and i have this tendency where i i like shake my leg out of nervousness or just anxiety or just i don't know frustration or annoyance and she would be like can you just move like bah, ega bah. and i'm like what do you mean she goes bah, get out just just go upstairs stop it or otherwise stop shaking your leg and i'm like okay i'll try but i can't fucking stop it especially when you tell me to stop it i can't physically stop it it's not gonna stop it so we would get into the biggest fight if her son takes a plate right off of me because i'm pregnant she would have a problem with it and complain why do you do that for her and you don't do it for me like like what can i do like that's your son if you don't do that for you and he's doing that for me i'm his wife he's obligated to do shit like that a few other fucked up shit would happen with it that has happened within our marriage one of them being the heavier in my pregnancy i got the more distant he became so he would just leave the house and just be gone for days i would complain to his mom she would be like will kego yiri hay why are you must have this ego ego hanu jine will kego yiri hay as a responsibility ga dushika sarta like you gave my son this responsibility so it's your business basically like what do you want me to do about it so i was there alone again i came from a country alone and then i ended up married and alone right so it it just became really difficult that like, i was heavily pregnant i had no fucking support like proper support i used to cry to my friends like 24 fucking 7 bro i became a movie like i should have been a fucking actor that amount of times i cried there were well, listen there were things that i tolerated that i should not not have ever tolerated i could deal with the arguments i could deal with the distance i could deal with all of that bullshit right but when we lived together the only possession that i had of my mother is was actually 38 grams of uh, gold it was a set of earrings um a necklace and a bracelet that i wanted to melt down for my little girl he took it to the pawn shop took money and forgot to go get it didn't tell me about it i found the receipts months later when it was too late to get it and i saw that it was an expired receipt yo and guess what shamsa did i forgave i was like you know what what's the point of getting mad about it is gone this is your husband is kafi let it go bitch i don't know what the fuck i was thinking okay i said to him listen you need to replace it you need to replace it because my daughter still needs it even though it's not as sentimental as it was but i will make it sentimental okay just give it back anyway never did i i just couldn't deal with it anymore the arguments just became too much i was always the ar so cut i was always the one dressed up fucked up i was the old, i was the one that was big mouthed i was the one that was causing the trouble within the marriage i was the big devil within this marriage apparently but wallahi all i was trying to do was fix it all i was trying to do was be part of it obviously how can we forget i'm the one that killed my mom did it anyway anything to hurt me these people would say and of course they would defend the, the his family would defend him all the time no matter what it is it's i was son we are he will kick am i not young am i not young bruh like i this kadiga this is a grown ass man i had seen oh we are he will yeah my yara he's got a gr what the fuck he's old enough to come and enter me but he's young in your eyes 
he can have a child, but he's young in your eyes. Like, you need, well, I Somali, well, it's a daddy, he, well, I'm a mascah, mascah, he, 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 like, Naga and Nakaska, I think, can a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a I, he was there when I went into, I actually didn't go into labor. I was, I went into the hospital to be induced. So <laughs> our appointment was made. So he, he had no excuse but to be there. And everything went well. I had my beautiful baby girl, Sahra, who I am very proud of and love very much. And again, nothing changed. When I had her, he was still distant. He was still away majority of the time. It's like they told the moment she has a child, just, just go, it's kaba shal, you know? My daughter has my surname and they have a go at me because my daughter has my surname. But I'm like, your son should have explained that because he doesn't have the national fucking passport of the country that he lives in, my daughter would have been nameless. She would have been called Sarah Dot. What the, are you fucking dumb? So I would have left my child with no name, with no fucking identity. Nah, I gave her mine. And the funny thing is I ain't never changing it, right? Anyway, when she was born, everything was fine. She came to this country. She is a British citizen. And since I was in a marriage on my own, and when I came here, he was not supporting me financially at all. I decided, you know what? I, maybe I can't do this. And I was contemplating divorce, but then I thought, you know what? Don't give up. Do not give up. This is your marriage. Don't give up. 